What's up, sweaties? It's episode 213. It's Wednesday. I'm John Schnepp. You're watching Collider Heroes. Thanks for tuning in. We've got an action-packed episode today. We're going to get all into the Infinity War, Black Lightning, a lot of cool things. Of course, we've got our comics pull list. Thanks for tuning in once again on the show today. As always, Amy Dallin. What's going on, Amy? Hello. Excited to be here uh, and do my very first show with Jay over here. That's right. Jay Washington is in the house. What's I'm happy up, man? to do my show with Amy and I don't care. Yeah, about I'm not the important <laughs> one here. And I get it. I get it. You but get you know it. You, no. I, I, I feel the love from both sides. You know what? <laughs> Let's get into the war going on with Infinity War. So we got 100 days, less than 100 days now before this gigantic Titanic movie comes to theaters in IMAX. So we've been waiting for it for forever, it feels like, since the birth of the uh the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, the Ruth Russos are saying Thanos is really kind of the lead role in Infinity War, and they're hinting that these tech scenes that we're seeing behind the scene pictures of where they're all wearing these little nublins on their on their hands, mm -hmm. and then they're like, they're in World War II, they're like, they're in the past with Loki and Thor, and they're like, uh, at the, you know, all these different sequences that have happened in the other films, not just Avengers, but in other Marvel Cinematic movies, now, they're kind of hinting that this tech has something to do with the Civil War tech that Tony Stark was wearing when he was going back in his mind and reliving scenes oh. from his parents. So I wonder now that we've seen those pictures where they're all wearing that stuff, if that's ex that he, they said that's a clue to Avengers 4. That's what they said. It's not Infinity War. It's a clue for Avengers 4. What are your thoughts, not only about that, um, but about Avengers and Thanos. Let's start with you, Jay. Well, we've been waiting for Thanos since the original Avengers film. Yeah. When we thought he was, oh, this is the dude for the next Avengers. And they was like, nah, you're going to get Ultron. And everybody was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think with the tech, because he did say in his speech that it would take like 10 years and it would cost them billions of dollars to have it done. If that means they're going to be able to recreate the scenes they've seen in World War One, World War Two, to find different things they need to help beat Thanos, then maybe. But again, depends on who lives out of infinity war right you know we don't know who survives so we don't know how we know it, will tony use it or will he give it on to somebody to say hey in case of emergency whatever like peter you know how to use this or banner you know how to use this i don't i want to know exactly how much that plays as all we saw was him recreating his last conversation with his parents so what do you recreate if you're steve do you rec recreate when you got the super soldier serum if you're Thor, do you recreate when you first got Milnor? You know, things like that. So. Right. I, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Well, do you think that they're more likely to use that in terms of, like like you said, sort of a clue-finding thing to sort of try to figure stuff out, or that it will somehow segue, like, now that we've got Doctor Strange in the universe, now that we've got other mm. stuff, like, into time travel shenanigans? I don't know. You know, I mean, now that they're saying that that's a hint for Avengers 4, <clears throat> I wonder about the time travel even being used. My, my, my wonder about it now is, like, is there some scenario where Tony Stark is like hooks, you know, Steve Rogers up and um, and Scott Lang up mm -hmm. and they're like, all your thoughts, we need to go through the events that we've encountered and we'll mutually see them through each other's minds. They have to do it in like five minutes, but once they're inside the computer, it's sort of like Inception where it's like, it seems know, like hours. Yeah, or whatever. so the outside world, there's some stuff going down while the inside world, they're like, it's slowed down or whatever. Could just like dreams seem to take <laughs> an hour, but where they're really like 30 seconds. I do I don't wanna, know. I want to see Scott Lang inside of Captain America's head and all of a sudden he asks, why did you work at a Baskin Robbins? Like, why, uh, we, why, uh, we, why were you serving ice cream? What, what's, what's right, the deal with that? Like, right. all of a sudden, because Scott Lang didn't tell him, like, yo, I had to try yeah. to get some jobs. I couldn't get nothing. Like, the Baskin Robbins joke. Baskin Robbins. Back. Steve you know? Rogers remembers the Depression. He's not mad at anyone who takes any job. Steve That's Rogers true. remembers when uh, when T'Challa wasn't allowed to hang out with him personally. Okay? <laughs> That's right. Him and Bucky used other words. They were like, what is he doing here? Well, speaking, <laughs> speaking of uh, Steve Rogers, uh, he's not going to be Captain America anymore. So he's literally going to be Nomad. And the Russo brothers are also talking about that. They're like, they've run it by, they've run by their kind of outline for the overall Avengers kind of series. Mm -hmm. They've run it by a lot of different filmmakers, Soderbergh. They've run it by the idea of like, what, you know, the minute they took on the Winter Soldier, they had kind of this overall idea. Now, how it all played out, I don't know. Like, whether they were like, look, we're gonna, we're gonna deconstruct Captain America from the get by certainly Winter Soldier was the beginning of the deconstruction right. by taking S.H.I.E.L.D. away and making them HYDRA. It made Cap have to question his country. All the things that followed through, especially with Civil War, you know, he's a man without a country now. And he feels like, it's, it makes, to me, it makes Steve Rogers far more global. But, you yeah. know, as the, the entity is somebody who's like, who has, a, you know, an altruism and a code of ethics that work less 
for America and more for the world, world which yeah. is what America really should be. So we see, I feel the strength of, of uh, the Captain America character, and especially when he comes back to eventually donning that suit again, will be when things are righted. And it's like, we live in a world now where there's so much, in our real world, not the Avengers world, where things are so wrong and upside down. It feels like these movies are echoing those sentiments in the strongest way possible by taking a character who is supposed to represent the codes and ethics that we as Americans are supposed to live by, mm -hmm. but in our own world, see turned and uprooted and ruined by criminals. So how are we gonna make sure that the secret criminals see their justice? Well, in, in the Avengers world, hopefully we'll see that happen as, as Steve Rogers is now Nomad. What are your thoughts about Nomad? Nomad is good. Let him, like you say, deal with things around the world. Because even in the Civil War, he was talking about what if they wanted with the Sokovia Accords, what if they send us someplace we shouldn't go? Mm. He wants to go places that things need to happen. But then the thing behind it becomes, who dons the mantle? Are we officially giving it to Bucky? Are we giving it to Sam? Mm. Or is there no Captain America? You know, that, that becomes a question right. too. Because it, in the universe, you need that symbol. You need a Captain America. Do you get the dude who's been wanted by every government in the world? You know, now he got a new silver arm, but it's like, right. he has the shield. You like, you good with it. Or do you get the guy who he flew around on wings? Yep. It's who becomes the new Captain America. Or do you just say, this sits to the side? No, I think it's got to be the Falcon. You can't be hiring an assassin. I know he didn't do, he was a <laughs> mind warped and stuff. <laughs> right. Yes. Look, it can't just be like, oh, he's the next guy. He's he like, hey, man, for I know movies. he was on no. all y'all newspapers, right? And <laughs> on every TV, he blew up a building. We get it. Yeah. But <laughs> he's here to help, right? You can look past that. Nah, That's how you treat Bucky, you know? Although I love, uh, just before the, the show started, we were talking about, you know, they, they're not going to do this, but they should. Just get America Chavez in there. Yeah, get America Chavez in there. Just look, we got somebody else. Look, we ain't got to worry about him or him. <laughs> her right she can fix everything <laughs> look I, it could be any one of those solutions i mean i think sam wilson is the one that makes the most sense to me yeah mm -hmm. um but uh avengers 4 now we're, we're talking about avengers 4 and we still haven't even seen infinity war yet <laughs> like look i mean it's fun to speculate about what is it going to be called is it going to be annihilation or is it going to be secret invasion mm -hmm. what is it because I mean, they've had a great way of combining comic book runs they had they've combined all of planet hulk and sucked it into Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok. And well, I how are they going to do mad that? About it, but I'm not. No, like, I think everybody said this. that. Everybody was like, "Yo, I should be upset that they did War <laughs> Planet Hulk," but they were like, I, I, "It I worked had so well. I had fun. Yeah. I so, enjoyed it." Hey, oh. look, Infinity War could literally be Secret Wars and Infinity Gauntlet combined. Mm. So what are they? Because that's how they've been running this. They've been running Combino Land. Like it was like, take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little of that. Bam, we got a brand new thing, and they executed well. They've got two and a half hours to get these things across. Look, Avengers 4, I don't know. We were joking about Kang being in it. We don't know <laughs> if it is going to run that time travel mm -hmm. thing. But now that we've heard them saying, look, it's a hint, those little tech things, it's a hint from Civil War, why they even introduced that. They're thinking about that all those years back. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll introduce this little nugget and then play that out later yeah. so people are familiar with it. Makes sense to me. Thanos, they've also said, you're going to see Thanos destroying more than a moon. So some of us got a chance to see Thanos literally tearing nuggets of the moon, bigger chunks, I'll say chunklets. <laughs> yeah, giant chunks of the moon and throwing them at people. Now that's something that a lot of people haven't seen yet. They're saying, don't even worry about that because he's going to destroy more than that. He is a destruction device. He they're like, should. They're saying he, they, want, they want people to think about Thanos the way people thought about Darth Vader. They want that character to have the same kind of impact to rival Darth Vader's presence. I mean, what are your thoughts? Can Thanos be the next, can be? Can he be Marvel's Darth Vader? What are you thinking? I mean, the the key there is, like, I don't know whether they can deliver on it, but absolutely aim for that. <laughs> like, there are different types of villains. Some are the sort of, like, twisted psychological villains, and others are sort of the, like, the what if someone who means the world harm has the means to follow through on that? Mm -hmm. And when you're doing it right, uh, you get really scary stuff. Now, it's an interesting comparison because Darth Vader is an incredible icon partly due to fantastic design, to sort of understated playing, uh, to but a lot to do with the structure they set up around him. Uh, even though he's, he's, he's answering to other people, but we watch him with his underlings, they construct that character out of small pieces in right. very specific ways. Uh, and, and you get a lot of it out of his... his uh, his scene with, with Leia. Like, that's really where you meet Vader and right. where you kind of know who he is. Uh, and to do that, you have to give Thanos the scenes. 
You have to give him the relationships. You have to give us a chance to watch him interact with if he answers to someone like, say, Death, if he has people who answer to him like, say, Proxima Midnight, and if he has terrifying scenes with our heroes. Like, you gotta lay all that groundwork, and if you do it right and you nail the design, you get a Vader. What do you I, I wanna see, with that being said, I wanna see his relationships with Nebula and Gamora. Mm. I wanna see his interaction with those two. It's about time. We only had one scene so far with right. him and Nebula. Thanks, Dad, and right. the walk off. Yep. And Gamora's always spited him. So that's one of the ones we'll get you. that. Yes. That's one of the ones we'll get, because we already know what the Black Order is going to be for him. They're, they're loyal. They're, they're here to do what he does. Mm. But I want to see that relationship, because we never really, yeah, like you said, we got the one scene. We haven't really explored that one. Dead on, and dead if on. you want to make him evil, show how evil he is to his kids. Ugh. Like his, yeah, the Black Order are all considered his children. Right. But the daughters that we know of directly, let's see how he treats them. I would like to see a flashback scene where he was making them fight each other and then Gamora. ripping Nebula apart. Yeah, and just so to you see lost a little bit again. Of that. I well, take another part. You'd be like, oh! Like, what if they put her into the flashback device to look for his weaknesses, and she's got to live through all that stuff? That could be yo, yo, whoa. Bam, you heard it here first, folks. I'd like to see that happen. Well, I don't want to see I just, it happen, but you, I'd like I mean, to see I'm so it. glad you brought this up, though, because they better not forget that they set that up. Like, it, it's... Yeah, I don't think they forget about anything. They're, I know. Like, they're planting little seeds like breadcrumbs. I mean, like, I think the Russo brothers, like, my God, we got so lucky to get those guys. Yes. You know? I mean, to get McFeely, to get, uh, to, oh, to get the Marcus and McFeely, to get those writers mm -hmm. and to get those directors who love comic books. I mean, that's rare. I mean, it's very rare. I don't know if you know that, but all the movies that have been made with superhero characters, a lot of the people, the writers and the directors and the producers, didn't read comic books and don't actually pref actually nope. even care to like. The, I read it for research. These guys grew up with comics loving these characters, so it's so important to have them at the helm of this stuff. And that's why, I mean, it just kind of proves it. When we're like, wow, they're just setting these things up and everything that they did like six years ago is now starting to pay off now. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. So, boy, I don't know, 98 days left? I'm gonna make a little calendar <laughs> now, so I don't know how many more days. Yeah, excitement. Guess, you know what else is really exciting? The, the brand new Black Lightning series. So Black Lightning literally exploded onto television on CW last week. Um, I finally caught up with it, watched it and the second episode last night. Man, that's why I was like, I got to talk about Black Lightning because the series is pretty fantastic. Now, when you talk about the Arrowverse, there's a lot of mm -hmm. episodes. I mean, that's like, it's almost overwhelming when you're like, yo, there's six <laughs> seasons of Arrow. Each one is 22 episodes. I don't know if I could ever catch up. I feel like I haven't caught up with Arrow. I've watched a few episodes, select episodes here and there. I've watched almost all of Supergirl. I've watched at least two seasons of The Flash. Mm -hmm. I've watched select episodes of Legends and a few of Arrow, because it's just so much to watch, along with having a life, sleeping, watching other things, and doing stuff. I mean, it's literally, it's so much, so much stuff, so much content, then you start adding other shows. I'm not even talking about super shows. Netflix dropping movies, going to see <laughs> movies, yeah. going to see other types of shows. Ash vs. Evil Dead, you should be watching that. That's entering its, its third season. But, I mean, we live in a great world right now where there's so much content but Black Lightning shows up and it's refreshingly different. I mean, for myself, it's it has a different vibe than the normal CW shows that I've I've become accustomed to. Now, does it have a slightly sometimes budgetarily uh, you know, ref pulled back look where you're not getting these epic kind of shots that you're kind of used to seeing in the cinematic versions of superhero films? Yes. But in the same sense, I, didn't, I never found myself like, oh, that's a cheap, a cheap fight scene. Or mm -hmm. like, I actually liked the episode two hallway sequence yeah. so you know every i think they were like every episode two's got to have the hallway sequence for daredevil <laughs> but i don't know if they were doing that but they're like we're good. we got our own hallway sequence so anyway i was very happy to see it. i don't know if you've seen black lightning yet see the first episode i haven't seen the second one all right well we're gonna we're not we're not gonna we're gonna avoid spoilers <laughs> we're gonna avoid spoilers jay and roca are gonna do a, an episode breakdown yeah. later today so check that on collider but we're not going to do any like spoilers for black lightning mm -hmm. all i'm going to say is well let's talk loosely about it jay let's start, start with you your thoughts about having seen the first two having seen the first episode and how it played through in the second i love it i love the writing i love the way it's going i love the way they built the characters i love the way they built this world this city it's not predicated on anything else when they put in flash it was predicated on what was going on in star city right. starling city then with Legends, it was everything that was going on in Starling and Central City. Right. Supergirl stood on her own for the first couple, well, for the first season, which is everything that went on with Superman. Right. This one doesn't. 
This is his own show. And there is no super powered bad guy. You know, do you, that we do know. you know what the city is that they're in? Freeland. Freeland. They're in Freeland. Okay. Or as I like to call, Atlanta Light, because that is exactly <laughs> what that city. I mean, they, all, they filmed it in Atlanta, and everything they did is Atlanta. Okay? <laughs> so shouts out of Ludacris pop up in an episode. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I love what, they, what they're doing with it. I love the direction they're going, the realism that they're taking in it. They're touching on issues that are diehard real issues in, in the community. Yeah. And that's only that's credit to Salim and Kiel's writing and Marl Brock and Kiel knowing, hey, we got to keep our finger on the pulse of the community. And so I love where it's going. I love the fact it's not in the Arrowverse right now. Like, let it be its own entity. We don't have to hear about, well, Oliver Queen is mayor, and he's still right. under indictment by the FBI. We don't hear about Barry Allen is on trial for murder. We don't have to hear about, well, Ray Palmer disappeared. We ain't seen him nowhere. Right. You know, we don't have to hear about any of those. So I like the fact that we let it be its own self. Now, now I'm hearing that this is taking place on on Supergirl's Earth. Right. That's what, we, that's what we've established so far. They, that's what they said. It's Supergirl's Earth, but we don't know the relative distance between um, National City and Freeland. You know, National City looks like it's California. Right. Again, Freeland is Atlanta. And uh, <laughs> so we. And California is Canada. And California is. It was, it was LA, now it's Canada. Now it's yeah. Canada. But yeah, so we have those two differences. So it, it's. It's right. It's worthwhile. It's worthwhile thinking that the two two heroes don't know about each other. You know, that all of a sudden you hear, oh, there's a chick who can fly, and there's a black dude who shoots lightning out of his head. It's like no. now one of my favorite things about this the very first episode and how it carries through is that black lightning has already existed. Oh yeah, he's been now here. He's he's, mm. he's been black, black lightning, lightning, and then officially retired after he did some things, he's which lets like, you know he's himself. not a met, he's not the bang baby, the particle accelerator metahuman. Mm. Because that hadn't happened, right? You know, there was no Harrison Wells built. He might have been building it, but it hadn't happened, right? And it's a different Earth. It's, and a, it's totally separate. So I mean, but I loved. I, I want to see more of those flashbacks with him oh, in yeah. the earlier suit. I want to see breaking into convenience state, yeah. convenience store robberies and stuff. I like <laughs> and I love that he's a principal. I love that he is conflicted for, with heavy issues to like to bring not not only because he's trying to get back with his ex wife, but also just the whole thing of his him being a principal. With uh, with morals and ethics of his own, where he's like, I'm not going to put in a metal detector. I, I mean, those kinds of things are really yeah. important. I and I, I got a kick out of seeing something that was real. It wasn't a bit. Like, oh, I've, I, I'm a villain. I'm trying to rob a bank. It was more like <laughs> these are real things that we need to address as a community. And like, uh, and I like the way that they've turned the hundred gangs into an idea of like super villains, but they're really literally a group of gangs. What are your thoughts about the gangs? The, the reality, what are your thoughts about Black Lightning? I'm in for all of it. Uh, I like you, you knew you were sitting in for something when you turned the episode on and the first thing you hear is Strange Fruit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're like, okay, right, it's right. that kind of, like we're doing this. Uh, and and they, are, they are super, they are not afraid to deal with the stuff that feels relevant to them uh, in this in this setting, in this world mm -hmm. they're creating. And it's a setup we haven't seen before where he really has a lot at stake. Uh, whether or like you know he's going to be stretching the limits of the superhero double life to like their absolute possible like mm. really how are you going to admit you're at a banquet and you're going to say that you just got held up in meetings and you think that your ex is going to believe you uh but but they are he has real conflicts and he has real stuff at stake and i love the idea that they're doing this as a family show mm -hmm. uh in a way that like you know it's Flash is my favorite of the other shows in part because a lot of their best stuff has been that family stuff. People have something really at stake. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I haven't seen episode two yet. But uh, I'm I'm excited. Well, without you, know, you saw episode one. If you haven't seen episode one, let's slap up that like spoiler alert. I got to talk about this one thing. So, <laughs> if you're if you're listening to this as a podcast or something, like you know, just scroll forward by a minute, maybe two minutes, just to be safe. Because um, I got to talk about it. So, end of episode one. His daughter breaks off that, you know, the yeah. kitchen sink, literally the, you know, the, the bathroom sink. And, and it's She's like coming thunder. Yeah. So it's kind of fun to see, like, how is this going to evolve? Obviously, we kind of I'm guessing that she is going to become yeah. as a superhero. Well, plus, we've already the seen the picture that they've had. They released a picture of Nefessa Williams in her suit. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. well, no, it's spoiler. It's fine. Oh, We're yeah. talking spoilers. Uh, anyway, also, so. if you don't follow on social media, uh. That they occasionally I do, but you know, I, I somehow missed that one. <laughs> but no, they put they put so she definitely gets her powers. Now the, the sister we know becomes lightning, but we don't see anything yet. That may be later on down the season, mm -hmm. whatever they do. But yeah, the fact they're showing her starting to build her and plus she's an activist. Mm. Mm. She's already an activist. So her being stronger 
for what she already does. I loved it, and I, I would like to see, I mean, what they're already kind of setting up, um, let me keep that spoiler thing up. But <laughs> what they're already kind of setting up, at least how I feel about it, is like, look, they already right off the bat in the very first episode were like, how come Black Lightning decided to save your kids? You know what I mean? That, it was, like, that was actually the second episode. Was that? That was second yeah. episode. Oh, sorry, second that, episode. Well, at least the spoiler alert was up. At least the spoiler alert was up, so, anyway, so y'all good. They all can, but I like the continuity where yeah. you can watch all of them. It feels like one big movie, which is what happened to me. So um, it feels like the the setup is that eventually he's going to have to ma make a decision. He's You can't be principal and and Black Lightning at the same time. And when he decides that, I think that's when his daughter is going to be like, hey, I'm going to join you. I also like the fact that if he decides to do it, this isn't one of those he can do it and his family will be OK and they're safe. Right. Because it's a gang. You know, you got to watch every corner. And the way Freeland is being overrun by the 100, yep. you have to watch that. And so he can't. Look, I want to see my principal come in. What happened? Man, I fell down the stairs. You were like 42, Mr. Pierce. Why are you falling? Stuff happens. I just want him to have the craziest excuses. Right. Mr. Pierce, why do you have a black eye? Huh? Like, he don't know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's going to run out quick because he's already in this by the second episode. People are like, yo. yo so I think we're going to hey, run bro, out of excuses. You know, quickly. there's a six foot six black dude running around here saving people. Right. And we got a six foot six principal who wants to save a student. And his cop friends looking at him right in the face like, you got the same kind of you got the same you got bitch. shave. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, you all right, let's get rid of the spoilers. So. <laughs> Oh, and this isn't a spoiler, but okay. just from that, like, uh, when you're watching a show and you're deciding whether you're in, like, Cress Williams, is that his name? Yeah. He's good as hell. He's yeah. charismatic. What? Like, it's great. He's Yo, great. Make sure you check out Living Single, where he originally was. He played <laughs> Scooter. He was trying to get with Khadija. That was played by Queen Latifah. I'm taking you to the 90s. Bam. He's got, go. he, Cress <laughs> has got this kind of cool smolder to him, a little bit like Idris Elba to me. He reminded yes. me of Luther. When I first started watching yes. Luther, I was like, no, look, I, you know, I watched The Wire, you know, I've seen it, but. Luther was where he popped off. Oh, yeah, to me, of course. You know? Everybody, but Everybody American, thinks of him as Stringer, Stringer Bell. Bell. Yeah. Everybody's going to think Stringer Bell. So. But, uh, yeah, so definitely check out Black Lightning. Add it to your already giant pile of superheroes TV shows to watch. It's great. Tony Isabella and Trevor Von Eden get credit in the credit yes, sequence, which I was very happy to see because that's how all superhero comic book TV shows should start by crediting their creators. Let's get into comic books. We're talking about creators right now. The pull list is coming at you. We got number five is coming at you, right? We're talking about Thanos. Check out the Thanos comic book. It's written by Danny, Donnie Cates and, and drawn by Jeff Shaw. Now, Donnie has been doing an incredible job, not only in all of his independent comic books, but he's been running Doctor Strange. Now I'm going to start reading Thanos. I haven't been reading it. I'm like, yo, I finally I was like, look, they got a Ghost Rider as a Herald. Dude. About Hulk. I mean, this looks crazy. Hulk on a chain yeah. is the greatest. On his knees. Yeah, King Thanos. I mean, so I got to catch up. That's how I feel about, but like, I'm going to jump in and get Thanos 15. And if I dig it, I'm going backwards. You know, nice. mm -hmm. I'm going to go backwards and know. forwards. Number four, we got Monstrous. So definitely be, you should be definitely uh, checking out Monstrous. Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. I think I'm saying the name. Takeda, yeah. Takeda. It's a great comic book. If you like science fiction comic books, definitely pick this up. It's beautifully illustrated. Not for the faint of heart, no, by the way. Mature readers. Yeah, it is mature. <laughs> you know, I think everyone who watches our show is mature enough. I just for like Monstrous. to put it out there I, in no, case I'm, you're like, oh, my nine year old will love this. No, <laughs> this, no. this show this show ain't made for nine year olds. But <laughs> thank you, Amy. I do appreciate that. We got to let people know that this don't get for five year old. This uh, you know that's you know, five <laughs> or nine. Just be smart about it. And guess what? Number two, number three, we got Doom Patrol number ten. Gerard Way and Nick Daringdon are doing a bang up job on Doom Patrol. If you if you read the Grant Morrison ones from like 20 years ago or if you've never checked out Doom Patrol, now is the time to be picking this comic book up. It's great. It's psychedelic. It's really fun. Gerard Way is killing it on this series. I want everyone to be reading Doom Patrol. Number 2, we've got Marvel 2 in 1. That's right. A <laughs> flashback. Look at that cover, man. Come on. Jay was like, yo, I got to get that just from that cover <laughs> That's alone, the cover. man. That's from the Chip cover. Zdarsky and Jim Chung are doing this. I love that they brought Marvel 2 and 1 back. That was my, as a little kid, that was my comic book because I was always like, it's a team up every issue. Mm -hmm. Just like Marvel team up with Spidey, Marvel 2 and 1 had the thing and somebody else. So it's like, that's the kind of thing that I love. I hope, hopefully, when they Marvel, uh, Marvel Studios starts doing Marvel team up or Marvel 2 and 1, when they bring their one shots back, because that's what oh, I want to see. That yes. would be 
fantastic. Yeah. There's a free idea for you, Disney. Get on it, please, with your new streaming channel. Anyway, let's talk about comic books. Amy, what pops off to you with these comics? Let's uh, talk about them. This is a great list. Chip Zdarsky's been making tons of strides. Uh, he initially was better known as an artist, but uh, he has this amazing sense of humor and just this incredible mind, and he's been um, blowing up as a writer over at Marvel. Uh, and Jim Chung is the original artist of Young Avengers and one of my favorite artists of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, we stealthily got a Fantastic Four book back. It's just half of them. That's right. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, this monstrous you are missing out. It is one of the best selling like breakout indie hit. It's been up for every award. Uh, it's it's dark and compelling and bizarre and beautiful. Uh, and Doom Patrol, Doom Patrol will take your brain apart and put it back together. Maybe uh, That's it's right. great. Missing it's great. pieces. It's okay. What do you think? I have I'm not into Doom Patrol, but after hearing this a psychedelic trip, I'm getting into it. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, and this is California where you put two plus two together. That's All right, right. So that's exactly how you I'm going. You get Doom this. Patrol. <laughs> you get Doom Patrol. Uh, Monstrous looks amazing. Mm. It looks amazing. I've, I've glanced over once. The two and ones, I'm here for it. I've always been a Marvel dude. Mm -hmm. So to see the two members of the Fantastic Four who don't get along really mm -hmm. have to work together. And then if you look at the cover, Doctor Doom is in the bottom corner. Right. Like, just to watch that. And he's just trying to pull out Iron Man. Like, I want to see that. Thanos, listen. Thanos as an old surly king with the Hulk as an old beat-up Hulk <laughs> on a chain says everything. And the Ghost Rider is like, I'm here chilling. I already know what can happen. I right. Mean, I, I will catch, I, like you said, I will read 15 and work my way backwards. Yeah. Because I want to see what, how the Ghost Rider get there. And like, he's just like, I don't want to do this. I like this that he's re referred to as the Herald of Thanos, similar to Galactus. Like, Galactus and Silver like, Surfer. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, I don't know, that maybe that's going to be coming up or maybe it already happened. I, I don't know. But I love that cover for Marvel 2 and 1 because it is, once again, that callback to Fantastic Four number one. There's been so many uh, homages to that cover with that giant oh, creature coming out. Yep. So it's done so well with Doom doing that. I'm walking away from an explosion <laughs> type of situation. Also, so you don't necessarily notice this, but like putting word balloons on the cover is a deliberate throwback to another era of comics. Yes, which is definitely. so interesting and so back fun. in the day, yeah, well, you used to get a bit of conversation. Fantastic with Four number one had yeah. those word balloons. Remember, it's like <laughs> I can't seem to use my stretching ability. I'm invisible. He was literally calling out <laughs> what they're doing. So definitely check those comics out. Get to your local comic book shop. It's Wednesday. Um, I wanted to remind everybody who lives here in California, Pasadena Comic Convention is happening this January 28th this Saturday. Um, I'm sorry, or is Sunday. it Sunday? Sunday. Thank you so much. Sunday, I would just be showing up be like, hey, no one's here. <laughs> so this Sunday, I'll be there. So definitely come by the Pasadena Comic Convention. I'll be signing my Slayer comics, selling the Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, Blu-rays, doing sketches and whatnot. So if you want to hang out, I'm in California, Pasadena this Sunday. It's a great small convention. It's really fun. There's tons of toys, collectibles, a lot of sweaty, cool stuff there. So go check it out. Let's get into some minor mutations. You want to You say might want to throw a shout out. We might want to throw a shout out to Doomsday Clock number three, which I think made your list. Number one. Did I list? Did I forget it? Yes, you I did. I totally forgot it. We let's go backwards in time. You're more see for fun. Good Doomsday call. Clock. Good let's call. let's show that one. Doomsday Clock number three, Jeff Johns, Gary Frank. Now we've heard that they're going bi-monthly because you know Gary Frank is like you know harvesting those pencils and yeah, because a hundred years of comics is not enough for us to understand that things are going to be late and planned for yeah, us. Yeah, so you know uh, we just have to have it right away. I <laughs> wish it was monthly, but I'm okay with it being as long as they were like, look, we'll stick to this bi-monthly schedule and it doesn't become five months, just like the original Watchmen. The, the no, that's part of their of homage, wait. right? They yeah. need to make you wait in the same way that you did in the original <laughs> yes. to see if the experience is the same. Well, they're going to start recreating it too much for me um, because it was painful. <laughs> Believe me, I was there buying do Watchmen as I had. To wait eight months for one of the issues, I was like, "Alan Moore!" Like, was like, oh, you know, and it was like Dave Gibbons was like, hey, hey, hey. And "Like, look, I don't want to see the same thing happen because guess what? Doomsday Clock is pretty entertaining, so haven't been disappointed yet. Looking for, I haven't, I haven't read. I know a bunch of people were this this morning writing about Doomsday Clock number three. I haven't read it yet. Did you read it yet? Haven't read it yet. All right, so one of my buddies said it is amazing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to borrow that. He was like, no, you have to get your own. And I was like, you're not Duh. a friend. <laughs> you're not a friend. <laughs> That's right. So I'm picking that up. I know Inman was already talking about it. He yeah, read, he was like, he was, definitely read the back part. You, you have to read all. Just like they're doing a good homage to, to Watchmen, Alan Moore always had these like 
copious amounts of like back notes and like fake news articles and stuff. And it was so much fun to read those because all that effort was put in to mm. tie in and give you mm -hmm. little hints of the overall story. So Doomsday Clock number three is the number one pick for this week. Get to your comic book store today, buy those comics. Let's get into Minor Mutations. Thanks for reminding me because I would have smoked right past it. I was like, <laughs> I was already so excited to talk about Marvel 2 and 1. Forgot yeah. about Doomsday there Clock. All right, Minor Mutations. What's first? It looks red. That's right. It's Red Sparrow director Francis Lawrence feels his film is much different than Black Widow. Red Sparrow, Black Widow. We'll talk about that. Uh, two, Gary Oldman and his son want him to be in a Marvel cinematic movie that's right gary oldman's son wants him to be part of that world he's already part of the dc cinematic universe uh number three or was uh, number three we've got forrest whitaker says black panther is taking us into outer space as if this movie can't get cooler um number four <laughs> lena luther and morgan edge battle in supergirl in the upcoming episode to the death who knows Hope what's going to so. be happening <laughs> um number five we've got brie larson is flight training as captain marvel starts production i think it's just started production earlier. They're like, well, just start making it. Awesome. Uh, six, Josh Boone says, New Mutants will be the hardest PG-13 ever made. We're going to talk uh, about that because we all thought it was R. Seven, Shazam casts Marta Millens as Billy Batson's foster mom. Well, now we know Billy's got a mom. Um, <laughs> maybe her and uh, Aunt May can hang out. Um, number eight, we've got Justice League, a VFX reel shows not only the early look of Steppenwolf before he became a very bad CGI puppet, it also shows some extra pissed off sequences of Superman. These are all, I guess, presumably from the uh, Snyder Cut. So definitely check those out there online right now. Number nine, we've got Kevin Feige wants to show Magneto take a gun apart the only way he can with his power, which reminded me instantly of like the Watchmen, but yo, Magneto's done it first. Kevin Feige wanted to do that back when he was working on X-Men. Guess what's going to be happening now that he's working on X-Men again? Uh, 10, Jessica Jones season two picks have hit the web. That series is hitting us in the next month and a half. 11, we've got Superman getting his red trunks. That's right. The underwear is on the outside again for Action <laughs> Comics number 1000. Uh, you know, I hope it's around for maybe a couple of issues. I don't necessarily, you know, think it's, it has to be there. But uh, we'll talk about that. And finally, Logan gets an Oscar nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. So we will talk about yeah. that. I mean, it's pretty crazy how so many different uh, so many different comic books. I mean, look, let's start right off from that one. I'll work, we'll work yeah. backwards. Sure. Uh, Logan getting an Oscar nomination. We've had like seven different superhero films get Oscar nominations in the past. Obviously, the animated Incredibles, Big Hero 6, those both won for Best Animated Films. We have Superman, which took three. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, Batman won Best Art Direction. Uh, last year, Suicide Squad won for best makeup. Oh, yeah, God, that's I a weird that one. You, I hate that but, you have to say Academy Award. Hey, look, Suicide I gotta list Squad. it off. But you know what? Let's talk about it. So, um, and also Superman won for best original score. John Williams, bam. So, uh, Logan getting an adapted screenplay, and of course, let's not forget Heath Ledger for Dark, Dark Knight for best supporting. Um, Logan getting an Oscar nomination for best adapted screenplay is a first because it's not in these kind of like be, you know best editing or mm -hmm. best original score or like best visual special effects. effects. Yep. It's best screenplay. Now that is big. That's why people are making a big deal about it. That's why I want to mention all the other Oscars that have happened have all meant something and been important. That's not saying they're not important. They're super important. But it's like a lot of people, especially people who love uh, action films, superhero films, are kind of always irritated. Like Wonder Woman didn't get an Oscar. It got snubbed. It's like, well, when you think about the list of all these different films, maybe Wonder Woman was number 11, or maybe it was number 12, or maybe it was number 13. In your mind, it could be number one, but that's the Academy voting for the way the Academy votes and the way they've always voted has been for biopics or you know, historical dramas or you know, things of the heart, things that, that, that's just how they've always voted. And so once in a while, the science fiction or the fantasy or the superhero film kind of breaks through like Good Lord of the Rings and now like Logan. What are your thoughts? Let's start with you, Amy, about Logan getting nominated. And how, what does that mean for the Oscars, if does it mean anything? First of all, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, I, there were a lot of really exciting picks in the Oscars this year. Like we have some underappreciated genres like Get Out is in be yep. Best Picture. Greta Gerwig is cracking that Best uh, director, director category, uh, along with Jordan Peele. Uh, and uh, 
Rachel Morrison, who I don't know if we were going to talk about it, uh, who uh, is nominated, the first woman ever to be nominated for cinematography. Mm -hmm. She's up for Mudbound, which was directed by Dee Reese, but she's also the person who shot Black Panther. Yep. So yep. if you didn't think you could get any more excited, you were wrong, get more excited. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's all fantastic to me. Uh, I, I'm disappointed about Wonder Woman. I think it, I could have been, I would have been very happy with it in score, in director, and in best picture. Uh, like, and in cinematography, like, it was a beautiful movie. I, I would have been very happy to see it honored, but I'm not surprised that it wasn't. And there are, like, I'm gonna maybe get in trouble for this, but, like, Logan did three things, actually, that the Oscars do notice and care about. Uh, what's unique is that they noticed it in a comic book movie, but it's a Western, it's a character piece, and it is about a dude dealing with aging and his place in the world. Mm -hmm. And those actually are all three sort of classic Oscar things. Right. What's really unusual is for them to notice that a comic book movie was doing that. And it's unusual for a comic book movie to do it that well. So those two things in combination make a lot of sense to me. I think, I, I think that the director and the actor should feel very honored that they helped put across that script to the point that it seemed like it was top five for everyone. I think they get a lot of credit for that. Like, you know, if you're if you're gonna bag on the bad guy in Wonder Woman, maybe watch Logan again. Uh, but you know, I don't. I'm not interested in seeing those movies fight to the death. I'm interested in being happy for Logan and really happy when a movie like Wonder Woman and when a director like Patty Jenkins gets noticed again. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I mean, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, was that? Because <laughs> Vesperoka, he usually goes on long, so he was clapping because you actually had real points to make. But you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> look, um, look, I agree. Like Logan definitely has an unforgiven vibe. So if it was like, yeah. you know, a little like, oh, I remember this movie. It's like got those little little moments that like turn people back into like, oh, well, why? Because it was really well done. A really well told story with a great character. What are your thoughts about Logan getting I, an nomination? I'm happy he got it. Yeah. Uh, the, for adapted screenplay, for them to take what to realize, oh, this is the old man Logan story. And they turned this into this project on screen they couldn't do the whole story because they didn't have the 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 ancestral hulk babies and <laughs> deadpool and all these all different right. things they didn't have all they didn't have hawkeye the actual good part right they right. didn't have all these things the and spider they took, buggy right they took all these little things that they had these elements and get got this and you got what should have been considered award-winning performances out of hugh jackman patrick mm. stewart and let's not forget daphne king mm -hmm. you know all this was amazing and for them to acknowledge it remember last year everyone thought that deadpool would have gotten it for, I think it was original, where they thought Deadpool would have got the nomination. The fact that Logan got it lets people know it's, comic book movies are starting to slowly but surely be more appreciated. Now, how are they gonna sort out original adapted for these things? Because this is a weird case. Like, they're not really adapting Old Man Logan. Like, they- It's, it's technically- But they didn't invent Wolverine for this movie, but it, so- Original adapted, because if you go back to the books that a lot of these screenplays are uh, supposedly adapting, they're usually not adapting those books either. Fair Sometimes enough. you'd be like, I don't even know if they read the it's book. It's just the way they <laughs> submit it. Yeah, it's, it's the way they it's submit it. It's the submission yeah, yeah. process. So I think it's fair that, and also you get double screenplays. You get original screenplay, you get best adapted. So fair. I think it helps everybody for that sure. cause, but I, I agree. You know, they're usually very different is what you know, normally happens. Let's go back to one. Red Sparrow director Francis Lawrence is talking about, I think he got kind of was like heard the buzz of a lot of people, especially comic book people like, hmm, Red Sparrow sounds exactly <laughs> like, 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 not just kind of similar, but exactly, exactly like. <laughs> Black, Black Widow. So he he made some he made some comments like, oh look, I'm adapting it from this uh, CIA agent, FBI stuff. This you know Red Sparrow's a real thing. This and that. I'm like, did the people uh, read Black Widow when they were like the people who were making this secret Red Sparrow? Like that sounds cool. Let's just make it a bird. You know, I don't really know. I haven't done enough of that research on the actual reality of the storyline. But I look, what are you what are your thoughts about it? When I first saw the trailer, I literally went on Twitter and said. Oh, a Black Widow movie without Black Widow. That was the exact thing I saw the moment I watched. I didn't even have to watch anything else about it. I right. saw the trailer and I was like, C I, uh, KGB, CIA, KGB agent, ballerina, kill scene. Oh, a Black Widow movie right. without, that's literally what I said the moment I saw the trailer. You couldn't, you can't tell anybody that it's a book called Red Sparrow. Everybody was like, mm, yeah, you just hurried up and found that. Right. So I'm, I'm gonna take sort of, I'm gonna agree with you, but disagree with okay. you. Uh, because what I feel bad about is that like, it seems like the, the director feels defensive about this as if he ripped it off, where he may have just found this book, but like, 
the people pointing out the similarity, similarities aren't wrong. It's just that there's real reasons for those similarities to exist. Black Widow is a 60s character who was supposed to be designed as someone you could imagine walking out of Cold War Russia. Mm -hmm. And it's the 60s. So you associate, if you're American and you're reading comics, you associate Russia with like brainwashing and ideology. Right, right. You associate them with ruthless tactics because you've been fed a lot of scary stuff about Russia. Mm -hmm. And weirdly, you also associate them with ballet because Russian ballet was the face of excellence Barishnikov. in the 60s. <laughs> You had Barishnikov, like the social center of half of New York. Right. You had all of this. There was always talk about like whether people would defect. It was a pretty logical set of things to put in a pot and come out with the Black Widow character. Right. Uh, and so for somebody else, I don't know whether the guy who wrote the book was aware of Black Widow comics. Uh, there's tons of reasons for them to be similar, but I don't think he needs to be defensive about it because, like, just admit that that's a similar basis yeah. for a character. Now, don't there's, come there's after me with, with my brand new book, Yellow Sloth. It's all about <laughs> secret agents who are animals and they do ballet. Um, <laughs> don't come at me because it's an original thought. Yellow Sloth, look for it. Never. Um, all right, Gary Oldman and his son want him to be in a Marvel film. So, of course, Gary Oldman, obviously, Commissioner Gordon, who's great. Now his son is like, Dad, can you just get in a Marvel film? So, I, look, I mean, I, Oldman is about to grab that Oscar. I was joking, he's going to trade in the Golden Globe thing that he doesn't believe in. He gladly accepted this, <laughs> uh, this fake award that I hate, that I ripped on, but I'll take this. Trade that in for the Oscar, dude, because that's what you're going to get. <laughs> but I think he's also going to get his wish of uh, getting to be in a Marvel film, because even after, even before he wins the Oscar, Gary Oldman's an incredible actor. So what are your thoughts about if Gary Oldman was going to be in a Marvel Cinematic movie, who That's what <laughs> would you pick? I will start this debate off. He's a little bit old to play Doctor Doom, but I could see him playing Kang. I could, I could <coughs> see him playing Immortus or Rama Tut, any of those mm. characters, if they go that route. So I'm going to throw in Kang. I wouldn't be mad if he became a Doctor Doom, but he's a little, uh, as far as how I, I see the casting of the new Fantastic Four, I want him to be the, around the same age as Reed Richards, so I would hope for someone in I their think 30s. I got it. Mm. We haven't seen the new Bugle yet. He can be the new J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> Ooh, that is good. I like that, man. Think that about is it. A we red haven't hot. seen the new Bugle yet. You're absolutely Since right. Since we got a new Spider Man and everything, yep. we had J.K. Simmons, who's now over in the DCEU as That's Commissioner right. Gordon. So we need a new J. Jonah Jameson. Wouldn't it be perfect to flip flop the roles? Yeah, flip -flop he, the took, roles. he took a Gordon and from Oldman. Now Oldman is going to be. I love it. What do you think? I mean, he, That's could, pretty he could play a number of Spider Man bad guys. Like, he's very much got that sort of yeah. terrifying, charismatic, everyman combination of qualities he right. can bring to the table. Like, he, if they wanted a new Osborne, he'd probably be great. Right. Uh, the, I, I, I don't know what would be most interesting to him. I hope that he would have the good taste to find some of this, these parts legitimately interesting mm. and not just being like, oh, I'll do one of your superhero movies. Wow. <laughs> uh, what? But, uh, Gary Oldman <laughs> as Galactus. <laughs> now think about that. Just put him in that weird visor. I mean, you know how a lot of them don't even wear the mask. It's just all smoke cap yeah. CGI. I would love to. He could. He could do a Gary. A Gary Oldman could do Galactus. He could do Jana jo J. Jonah Jameson. I would not be mad at either of those. Uh, Forrest Whitaker says Black Panther is taking us into space. So in a recent interview, he said, you know, we're going all. We're going all around. We're going to these different places. We're even going to outer space. Well, that was the first anybody heard about that. Now we were like, I don't know if Marvel's like, zip it, what are you, zip it, zip. Look, what's, what are your thoughts? Are we gonna see some space activity or is this just like somebody, like one of the Wakandans in a satellite, like yes T'Challa, or what do you think? What Look, you give me a Vibranian Wakandan shuttle and I'm so happy in my life. I just wanna, my king, we are here around the moon. We have seen the things that are coming to earth. You need to hurry up and bring the panther to face. Tell Shuri to develop another suit. That's true. Right. The they, they're we visiting found the real humans while we were up here. Right, I was right. going to say they're Listen, visiting Atalan, the inhumans. humans. Whatever they thought it was, it is not that. Okay, that was the suburbs of Atalan. <laughs> That's right. That's the unofficial reboot of the inhumans happens in Black Panther. What are your thoughts? Outer space. Uh, I'm in. I, I am. I am now at the point where I'm like, I don't want to know anything more about the story of this movie. Uh, just let it be February 18th. 16th. 16th. Uh, th yeah, just come already. Uh, so yeah, but if we're going to space, I'm in. And yeah. it would be great because you don't want Infinity War to depend on having seen Black Panther, but like, it doesn't hurt to throw in some stuff that sets it up. No, not at all. Cannot wait. Black Black Panther can't get here soon enough. Uh, some of us are going to get to see it a little bit early, so 
Let's we'll be reporting on it as soon Hallelujah. as we can. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> so uh, number uh, five, four, we got Lena Luther and Morgan Edge battle it out in Supergirl. It's so much fun to say the word Morgan Edge because that is a, uh, a Jack Kirby character who was introduced. It's so much fun to see that kind of coming through in Supergirl. So now when they say battle it out, that's not just a war of words. They're they're hinting at something a lot more lethal. What are your thoughts, Amy? What do you think is going to happen, Supergirl? I can't comment on this one. I'm not caught up, but it sounds exciting as hell. Okay. What about you? I think there's going to be a fight, but I'm not sure. We haven't seen... I would like to have seen Lena Luthor start training to fight unless we all of a sudden know she can just kick ass and everywhere. We don't right. know. But I, I'm, I'm skeptical to see what happens. I know they've been having, since I've been watching Supergirl, which I watch every season. Yes, I watch Supergirl religiously. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had this running feud. So it should come to a head pretty soon. And I'm hoping that she just knocks him out of a window personally. <laughs> right? I don't know if they're going to, if they're going to get rid of Morgan Edge because he, ultimately he is supposed to be the conduit to the uh, apocalypse to dark side. I don't know if they're ever going to bring that in, seeing as they didn't use it in Just League. Maybe that character is optioned back in or something, or maybe he's optioned out. Who knows? Well, they're using the world killers now for Supergirl, right. so I don't know if that'll play the same. And they did have the Daxamites and everything, so I don't know if they're going to use him in that realm. At or, least this season. Or if Rain actually kills him, because she was trying to kill him in a couple episodes ago. Well, we'll find out very soon whether this guy lives or dies. My, my bet is he might be out of the picture. Brie Larson is flight training as Captain Marvel starts production. So that was exciting to, because we keep hearing about, you know, Shazam, the other Captain Marvel, is now in production. They're shooting stuff, they're casting, they're building sets, everybody's there. They're shooting now. Was it now the real, the other Captain Marvel? You got Captain Marvel, Shazam, and then you got Captain Marvel. I just Marvel. like, yo, Brie Larson's character. That's how I just remember it. Yeah. Because right? it's so confusing. Just say like Carol. Well, now they're shooting. Carol Danvers, yeah. It's yeah. January. They were like talking about starting February or March. She's now already in Atlanta. Yeah. Why not? Yep. She's already filming Avengers 4. Look, it's like she's here. Let's, we got the script. We got everything we need to do. Let's just go. I love it. I, I'm excited to see that. Well, how about you? Oh, I'm so, so excited. I, like, historically, it is hilarious that after, you know, 50, 60, 70 years, uh, however long ago the 40s were, uh, <laughs> like, that the, the first Captain Marvel came into existence, uh, like, that the two movies should finally be happening at the same time is hilarious. It is very hilarious. true. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm excited as hell. I love that picture of her in the flight suit. I love that she's learning that. Obviously, she will not be responsible for really flying planes in the movie, but there's a lot for an actor to draw in and stuff like, mm -hmm. oh, I can call myself right back to the feeling of plummeting through space because I just did that. Yep. Like, you know, I, I, it's all good news. Yeah, Brie Larson, great casting choice for Captain Marvel. Josh Boone talking about New Mutants is now going to be the hardest PG-13 ever made. But it was weird because we are all under the assumption that it was rated R. What do you think, Jay? The face of displeasure. Yes. Somewhat, somewhat Don't annoyed? Don't sell us this movie as a rated R. And now you go back. Anything else in the future, if it's PG-13, let it be it. Amy and I had a discussion before we started recording. <laughs> yes, you want kids to be able to see it. But you sold everybody and had everybody pumped up off an R-rated horror mutant film. Right. You had everybody's expectations up to that. Granted, the trail is hot. Now we still got to wait 10 months anyway right. after it got pushed back. So it's like, how do you make a hard PG-13 movie? Well, the hardest. The hardest. Hardest PG-13. Well, look, I think that's Josh's way of trying to save face in something that's very annoying that all of us were very, very, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I was pissed when they pushed it 10 months and then said, we're either going to make it scarier or not scarier. So now we see that they're, because we were talking about this before the show, you don't make a movie scarier and make it PG-13. That, that's never been done ever. Mm -hmm. It's never ever, so that's not, that's, so they are gonna, they're reshooting things or reshuffling things or cutting things to make it not, not less scary, but maybe more in the realm of perhaps we'd hope the comic book I don't know what the decision-making process is over at Fox or who's actually in charge of the New Mutants. I know there's different people, different producers for all of the different films. Now, we've seen Logan, which just got nominated for an Oscar. We saw Deadpool. Both of those films were rated R. So we were assuming that New Mutants, being a horror film, was going to be the next R-rated film coming from Fox because they were the ones who could do that. Mm -hmm. Now, with the Disney merger, I don't know if that has something to do with it or if if Fox was just like, hey, we, we, had our, we did our test screenings and we've decided to go this way instead of that way. What are your thoughts? 
Well, and I, we talked about it beforehand, I couldn't remember having had a definite idea of what the rating was going to be for this. So I, I, like, there's probably video evidence of me talking about it that I've just forgotten happened. Uh, but I will agree that if they had him make one movie and then change their mind, that is not a good atmosphere for creativity. Right. Um, I'm a big believer in there's a lot of different ways to make a horror movie. There are a lot of ways to scare people with what isn't seen. You get you have a lot of options as a filmmaker for for making frightening cinema, but if that is happening in conjunction with a 10-month reshoot, I don't it's not a great sign. I agree. Uh Speaking of Captain Marvel, we got the other Captain Marvel. Shazam has just cast uh, Marta Millens as, I hope I'm saying her name right, as Billy Batson's foster mom. So it's nice to know that, number one, the foster mom is in there. It's a, you got an Aunt May situation happening. <laughs> so um, what are your guys' thoughts on that, the Aunt May situation for Shazam? Because uh, it's going to be, like, big. They're not, they're not shying away from the idea that it is a fun action comedy, which sounds exciting to me. It sounds good. So I'm, I'm with it. Like, we're just casting out the family. We're just telling you everybody we got right now. Yeah. I mean, th those casting announcements are like, cool, we got the main ones out the way. Yeah. Now, let's start getting production. Let's start seeing set photos. Let's see what Zachary Levi looks like in the suit. Yep. Because mm. that's, I think that's one of the biggest things everyone wants to see. How is he going to look at, because he's not a bigger dude. So mm. how much bulk is he going to put on? How is he going to look Henry Cavill in Superman? Because technically... Shazam Captain Marvel is supposed to be twice the size of Superman in muscle size. Right. You know, I want as <laughs> Levi is not that dude. What type of bodysuit are y'all finna put on him? Or is that what are you gonna do? Those are things we really want to see. The casting yeah. announcement's cool. Well, we know Mark Strong's in it. Cool. I wanna see, like you brought that up, the, the first pick. I wanna see it kind of echo some of the, the the imagery that I remember as a kid from Shazam as all, as well as the TV show of Shazam. Yeah. Where it's Shazam. And then Billy Batson is standing in front of him with mm. clouds and lightning and stuff. And the dude who played Shazam, both different, both Shazams from the mm -hmm. TV series, was not a ripped dude. He was just a guy kind of in a suit, in a spandex suit. He was like, I'm here. <laughs> That's, you know, people weren't like, oh, he's, he's, he, can, he can pump this kind of metal. It's like, he was just a dude. I don't think Zach is, I think he's going to be somewhere in the middle. He's not okay. going to just be like a guy who slapped a suit on. He's put in the work. Mm -hmm. He's been talking about putting in the work. I've been hitting the gym, this and that. So we're going to see he's a bit bigger, but I don't need him to be like, I don't need him to be cav cavil sized. But that's me. What are your thoughts? It's interesting because our notions of what a very strong man looks like have changed over time. Sure. Uh, you know, you look at the, the history of people who've played Superman will show you that our idea of big buff guy has changed over time. But you are right that, sh uh, that Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam now, uh, ha is often drawn to basically look like a Bruce Timm character. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, he's, he's, uh, and it's, that doesn't match, that That would sort of, now that people like The Rock exist and look like they do, we are conditioned to think that that can happen in real life. Right. Um, and it, it'll be interesting, but I, I'm open to a variety of, like, if he plays it and we all fall in love with that, he can look a little different than the, the, the version we imagine in our heads that looks like Darwin Cook drew him or something. Well, the, you mentioned The Rock. He's actually playing Black Adam. So it's sort of like when they first cast Black Adam, I was like, sneaky DC, you're going to play, you're going to cast him as The Rock and Ka and Shazam. Yeah, that's, and what, everybody thought. that's what everybody thought. Yeah, was it was have. like, mm, very smart, Dan, but no. But actually, this is well, The Rock's first line. is like, you're a lot smaller than I thought you'd be. Like, they're setting it up where if and when, finally, the comedic value they happens. have, the, they do that fight that it'll it'll have a cool look to it. Um, Just League Effects reel shows the early Steppenwolf and a pissed off, you know, very angry Superman uh, when he was confronting the League. Uh, so these effects reels are, uh, you know, basically animatics that are made while the film is in production to help guide the uh, the entire production crew, the director, everyone to the shots. You'll always see usually at the bottom what kind of lens they're using, things like that. Mm. Those are in all of these animatics. If you just want to learn about how animatics are used and why people like myself or other people who've directed TV shows use these kinds of animatics, that's what they're there for. They're to show you what the shot is supposed to be like, what kind of, for the people who actually are the cinematographers, what kind of lenses they're going to be using. It's very important. So when we see that, this hints at the Snyder Cut. This hints at like, we don't know. I don't. I haven't seen a Snyder Cut, but we know that the Snyder Cut exists. It had to in order for the Warner Brothers people to say we don't like it. They had to see it. Yeah. They had to see a screening of it. And so I feel like you know, as we see little more pieces, more and more pieces are revealed, more and more reasons for what we got as Just League are revealed as well. That Steppenwolf. There was some concept art like that was released a couple months ago that that's actually in the Just League 
uh, art book, which I have, it shows you the Steppenwolf that was going to be. And then these SFX reels show that same Steppenwolf, meaning that it wasn't just concept design. They were going with this look. And then they changed it somewhere in the some somewhere along the lines they decided well let's have them have this weird crab chin and like have a human face and all this other kind of stuff because look if you think about it this earlier version go online you could check you watch this spfx reel you could see steppenwolf looked a lot much more not only like doomsday more alien and more like a giant just a big monster mm. so maybe they're trying to humanize him in some way shape or form to make him fit more into what dark side was going to look like but then they cut dark side out then they also cut out all of steppenwolf's dialogue and why he's even getting these boxes together with yeah. egra and all of the basically the whole story was all cut out so you just have a dude bad <laughs> cg like hey what so anyway what are your thoughts the, the look of steppenwolf and the pissed off superman let's start with you jay uh you just want to piss off more fans showing them this that's how I, I'm not saying you're intentionally doing it, but that's all this is going to do. Mm -hmm. It is going to piss off the people who want that Snyder cut so much more yep. because they're, they're they've been clamoring for it. it's petitions out. And now you're going to show what he could have looked like in comparison to what he did look like and show even the pissed off Superman, which we hear that there were also the blacks, the black suit shots. Right. You are literally asking these fans to become more ravenous. Granted, it'd be nice to see, but I'm staying off social media for a while talking about it. <laughs> Definitely. Amy? It's so hard to know how to evaluate the movie we did not get to see. Uh, I'm, you know, I guess, like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the information that, like, Superman would have been angry. Okay, why? <laughs> In a different way than sort of zombie Superman was? Or, right. uh, you know, I, I'd be curious to, like... I would love to have these images in conjunction with context. Why did Steppenwolf change? Whose idea was it? Did they decide that it was going to be more expressive with a human face? Or did they run out of time and think it was too expensive to make the other thing? Those are very different reasonings. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I'd love to know either more or less. I don't know. Yeah, the villain was my <laughs> biggest problem. The you know the this the plot was the biggest problem for me, unfortunately, with the movie. The 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 the, the use of the cubes. And the villain, and even his mouth doesn't match. Anyway, let, let's stop talking about that. <laughs> Kevin Feige wants to show Magneto take a gun apart with his power. And I thought that was like instantly. I think of Watchmen when you know he's like Poof, takes the yep. tank apart, puts it back. But I've seen it in the comic books as well. I, I, I want to say it was Jim Lee who first drew it, but somebody for maybe it was Kirby who first drew him dismantling something or putting it back That's with the power. Tweeted us if you find the earliest time that that happens. Yeah, please look it up because I don't even want to Google it. I want you guys to look it up, <laughs> guys and gals, find that info and then tweet it at us. Amy, what are your thoughts about Magneto using his power of magnetism? Uh, Kevin Feige loves comics, and I love that about him. Uh, he is the kind of guy who doesn't go, why can he control metal? He goes, what's cool about controlling metal? Right, right yeah. it's this. It's this kind of thing uh, that not only is a neat-looking stunt, but speaks to both his danger and his weird ethics. Right. The idea of him disarming someone when he's like the most dangerous terrorist alive. Uh, like it, it's, it's an instantly compelling image that only works because of your uh, supernatural, not supernatural like magic, but elements that don't r relate to regular realistic film. Mm -hmm. So if you are working with superpowers, with these other not normal things, instantly settling on an image that calls up both the ideas and the sci-fi possibilities of your world like this is why you're the boss yeah keep well, it up yeah i'm not mad at it i would have loved to have seen that in x-men first class when he's like fighting those nazis but why we never seen that's what i thought like we've never seen it no. in any of the x-men movies magneto's been involved with and involved in we never saw the gun dismantle which we could have but if kevin feige can do it more power to you my friend please do definitely jessica jones season two picks are hitting the web now we're sort of seeing like you see david Tennant, you're like you know that's just in her mind so i'm okay with that a lot of people are like he better not be coming back i was like well memories never fade <laughs> if you want them to they're still in the back like hey i'm there so that's how I, I hope that that's how that character is being used all the other picks i cannot wait i love the first season of jessica jones what are your thoughts bring it on just <laughs> is it here yet <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a month away, right? So it feels like March? that, right? I think it's 13, March. All 13 episodes directed by 13 women directors. Let's do this. Bam. I'm, I'm for it. Cannot wait. Uh, so number 11, we got Superman gets his red trunks back for Action Comics number 1000. Now, I'm very, first of all, let's just say I'm very happy that DC went back to their original numbering with Batman, 
mm-hmm. and Superman for detective comics and action comics. And I'm also very happy that Marvel went back with some of their select characters like Thor. Oh, they're, they're big characters, mm-hmm. the big guns, and went back to their numbering where they're like, oh, Thor is on 703. It's not like 15 or number one of a six episode something. And it kind of, because you get tired of that where it's like, and also it's impossible to keep track of like, what volume number one should I, I can't even recommend comics because people are like, well, I bought that volume. You have to be so specific right. mm-hmm. about what story. It's like, that's why, I mean, look at Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're calling it like, you know, Thor Ragnarok. They're smarter, but they don't have to do numbers. Mm-hmm. They could just subtitle it, bam. It shouldn't have been called Superman for the Quest for Peace. It should have just been Superman, the, the Quest, Quest for Peace. Peace. Still would have sucked. Featuring but, nuclear man. I know. Right? Oh, God. <laughs> so Action Comics, number 1,000. What are your thoughts? Red Trunks are back. Uh, honestly, I'm with you. I'm just relieved they put the dang numbers back. In 2011, when they reset the numbers, we were all like, you're going to put it back, though, right? You're not going to. You are going to. I know you're saying you're not going to, but you will, right? Right. Uh, so that's been, you know, seven years of, like, crossing our fingers. And, it, you know, I find it bittersweet. Rebirth has actually been a big success for DC, like, creatively, and, and uh, it's been doing a lot of good things. But today's issue of Flash has a big 700 in the background, uh, but is numbered, like, 30-whatever. Uh, because they didn't put the numbers back on everything. Right. So it's a little weird. We're kind of skipping Flash 700. Yeah. Uh, I don't love our new renumbering world, uh, but we've we've been down that road before. There's there All of the solutions to this have their own problems. So I'm just grateful we're getting action 1,000. I assume that the underpants are a stunt. It's a little silly that that's a news story, but I will be happy to see them. Yeah, I, I'm predicting it, it might be part of a... Like they're saying, is like re- redesigned. He's got the weird cufflinks and the tr- and the underwear. I just you know I I get a lot of artists and 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 writers in the DC world and Marvel world and fans love those underwear trunks. I'm just not one of them. What are your thoughts? I'm happy to see it. Uh, it's classic Superman. You know, people have come to you know. There's a generation who knows him without him, and so you interest you introduced him to where he started in a sense. And also the numbers. I have ADHD, so yeah, put the numbers back where they should be. <laughs> So, yep. All right. We're we're almost at an hour now, so I'm going to do these Twitter questions and we are going to rock through them as quick as possible. Starting with Langley, my niece is freaking talented Neely asking, thoughts on a live action biopic about the seven crazy comic book artists that defied the big two publishers, DC Marvel, and created Im- Image Comics. It's a fascinating story from the 90s that changed and influenced modern geek culture as it is now. I would love to see a live action biopic. I, I mean, uh, Kirkman did a great one hour episode you could find that he did a, you know a behind the scenes yeah. series he concentrated a whole hour on those guys and yeah, interviewed all of them i would love to see a movie version how about you i think it would be very interesting uh there there are a lot of real life stories from comics that i'd love to see make to the jump to the screen i think that would definitely be one that deserves to be told although i think like i would love to see proper biopic of like all right and how did it go and whose work came before them and uh, like there's a lot of wider context to that story but it's absolutely a story that's compelling definitely yeah uh, pull the veil back yeah that's Siegel it. and Schuster you got I mean you got Bob Kane you got all mm-hmm. these people but this is a more current one what are your thoughts like I said pull the veil back on it you know let us see what happened let us see how everything played out how there was good and bad that we don't know about mm. definitely you know let everybody tell their story and then have them all together telling the story all right next question is OC Steve Based on the success of The Walking Dead, do you think Hollywood would touch on other Robert Kirkman properties? I'd really enjoy an Invincible animated series similar to the HBO Spawn. I would love to see an Invincible live action television they series. They made that announcement, right? We're waiting to see we what happens. We are waiting. Yeah, they, they announced it. It's supposed to be a movie. Yeah. Is it a movie or a TV series? Uh, I, I have my notes on it. I think it's a bit of both. I just remember some kind of announcement. All right, well, yeah, it was move Seth, on. Yeah, Seth Rogen. It was announced in April of 2017. Uh, that Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg were going to write a, a movie about it. Bam. Now, you can't get a better team than those guys. They're killing it with Preacher. Can't wait to see the boys and Invincible. Bam. Le- Andre Pearson asked, could the art style of the Spider-Verse movie actually be the look of just that said universe, allowing him to maybe make a live-action Miles in the MCU if he ventures out of it? I don't see that happening. What do you think? I don't know if they would prop like I don't know if they would decide to connect those outside of sort of a Lego movie like we're mm-hmm. breaking the fourth wall scenario. I think it'd be cool as heck, but I also don't think that that movie existing is any reason we can't have a live action Miles. I agree. What do you think? Same here. I mean, we can have still have a live action Miles Morales and have an animated one. Let's do this. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're going to do both. Golden Boy asks, as for Nicolas Cage's Kang, I think that we had talked about that on Monday. I think that what would be interesting, I can see him as Rama Tut, the conquering badass Kang, or even the Timekeeper himself from limbo and mortis cage can bring some great acting experience to the character now we're talking about nicholas cage playing kang 
but like on, on fire, wild ass Nicolas Cage, because that's what I want to see. I want to see <laughs> if he was going to take on a Marvel character or a superhero. I was like, get him on as a Marvel super villain. Get him into the Spider Man universe as Mysterio. I want to see him <laughs> full Cage unleashed. That's what I want. <laughs> what about? I'm sorry, we got that. Fishbowl head, fishbowl head. Fishbowl yes. head, Nicholas Cage. Yes. Do it. I'm here for it. Make it happen. <laughs> all right, you guys, all right, we're in. So <laughs> the uh, final question before we get to sweaty question of the week is, Will, with all the drama with Affleck, Batman, and looking for a way to segue out of the role, do you think they could have the Nightwing movie carry over to the Batman and have that actor take over as the Batman? I'll just say this. I do not want to see any more films until they get the Batman made. I'm just like, look, I'm tired. Of, I wanna see Nightwing. I cannot wait to see Nightwing. I wanna see another Harley film. I wanna see a Batgirl film. Who is Batman? These are all the part of the Batman legacy. I need to see the Batman film. We've we've got some kind of version of Batman and Batman v Superman and Justice League and a, a few little cameos in Suicide Squad. If Affleck is not gonna be Batman anymore, which it sounds like he's not, I wanna see a Batman movie center stage i want to i want to see that before all these other films are launched with him showing up in it what are your thoughts amy it's interesting because i'm i'm sort of happy to have the energy and focus put on other characters but i essentially agree with you that you can't build the bat family without some idea some consistent idea of what the foundation is like if nightwing is nightwing who was his batman right if who batgirl was, was batgirl who was her batman yeah like that that's you, you have to have answers to those questions, even though I'm actually really cool with taking, letting the focus be on some of these other characters that haven't gotten the spotlight yet. I want that focus, but I need the origin. What do you think? I'm so tired of hearing about it. I just, <laughs> I just wanted, like I said, just move on. Let's get a new Batman. If we're going to do it. Let's go. Yeah. And then you can focus on Nightwing, Batgirl, all these properties that are coming up. Let's just go for it. Yeah, let's stop stalling. Announce the date. Get that movie made. Yeah. All of us want it. Sweaty question of the week. Marco Gonzalez asks, do you think the MCU could flip Fantastic Four 52, number 52, and use Black Panther to introduce the FF? I think it would be dope to see that on screen. I love that idea because Black Panther was first introduced in Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four, number 52. Mm -hmm. For the Marvel equivalent, wouldn't it be cool to introduce maybe Reed Richards on a phone call for the, I don't know if that's going to happen. It's coming out in a week and a half. I don't know if this can happen. <laughs> Probably not. I think it would be cool. What do you think, Amy? Oh, uh, if you use one of the sequels to set that up, like I, I'd be, I would have mixed feelings because I want Black Panther to just get to have his own adventures. He's going to have more than enough supporting characters. He's going to have more than enough mm -hmm. world to explore. But also, I love the idea of the same way that Fantastic Four was the staple book everybody else came out of. Yep. The Inhumans and Black Panther and, yep. and Galactus and so much creativity came out of there. I love the idea that we'll just be on like our fifteenth Black Panther movie and we'll just be showing up to see who they're introducing this time. That would be like amazing. this is just the the spine of the universe. Or just even a reference of like I've got to call Reed Richards, put my note down. Something I'd like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Do the same thing. Just do the reverse. It's the great homage. <laughs> Let's make it happen. I don't know if they had time because these things were all happening. Maybe they had the lock cut before the Disney Fox thing happened. Hey, man, this has been a sweaty episode of Collider Heroes. Let me thank my guest. Jay, where can people find you online? Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. Jay Washington. That's M-R-J-A-Y-W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. Amy, where can people find you online? You can find me at Enthusiami or talking comics over on Geek and Sundry. Bam. You can find me here sweating it out. Uh, definitely, uh, thank you so much. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a Patreon next month with a lot of other crazy stuff. So look for that. This has been episode 213 of Collider Heroes. I'll see you next week. What's up, sweaties? John Schnepp here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Heroes. If you want to watch more Collider episodes of Heroes, comic book shopping, you can click on any of these links right here to get more of that content. You can subscribe right now and share Collider Heroes, share comic book shopping with your friends. Thanks for watching. Thank you.